The present system is not merely slavery, but extermination. An African slave was well cared for and well fed, so as to be strong for his master's work. These poor Indian serfs had no master who fed them or cared for them. They were simply here to be driven by lash and gunfire to collect rubber. I've never shot game with any pleasure. I have indeed abandoned all shooting for that reason, that I dislike the thought of taking life. However, I'd shoot or exterminate these infamous scoundrels more gladly than I should shoot a crocodile or kill a snake. I swear to God, I'd hang every one of the band of wretches with my own hands if I had the power. I have reached the conclusion that the only way for these Putumayo Indians to move away from the miserable condition to which they were reduced is to carry out an armed insurrection against these gentlemen. I would dearly love to arm them, to train them, and drill them to defend themselves against these ruffians. As to laws, all these South American republics have excellent laws on paper and no sense of equity in the man behind the paper. The laws are beautiful and simple books. A fool can turn the leaves and apply them. An honest fool would make an ideal judge. But these people are not honest and are not fools. And to obtain justice in Peru or Brazil or any of these new world countries, one must bribe and lie, cheat and corrupt, terrify and threaten. So that justice leaves the soil rank with misdeeds. As Hardenberg has written in his book, The Putumayo, The Devil's Paradise, in Amazonia there is only one constitution the Winchester Constitution, and one article, Calibre 44. Portuguese and Spanish expeditions have always gone up the Japura River to catch slaves, and the methods described nearly a century ago are exactly those used nowadays by Arana and this English company. It's appalling to think of all the suffering so-called Spanish and Portuguese civilization has wantonly inflicted on these people. It's naive to believe that the colonizers will all of a sudden grant their right to freedom. Never. No empire has ever been destroyed without resistance. These men have never been punished for the most awful crimes against humanity. The only way for the company to survive would be to introduce reforms and sweep away the evil system. Unfortunately, I believe this is well nigh impossible. I cannot see how the company can or will continue to exist. The English board will resign, and what then? Iran returns to his vomit until the last drop of latex has been hacked from the heart of this miserable forest and the last Utoto and Boris has been burned alive. I am sick of this horrid atmosphere of crime. Between 1905 and 1910, for 4,000 tons of rubber to be produced, more than 30,000 Indians have died. In the end, no one was punished for these terrible crimes. Not even one. Infamy. Just as the reports about the Putumayo River scandals have not changed anything, I believe that in Ireland we are following the same line. We are to some extent like the Putumayo Indians, subdued by a powerful empire, and that only by means of an armed insurrection will the system be changed. Self-government is our right, a thing born in us at birth, a natural right. There is nothing more important than the right to feel the sun or smell the flowers or to love our kind. This charge of high treason involves a moral responsibility as the very terms of the indictment against myself recite. Inasmuch as I committed the acts I am charged with to the evil example of others in the like case, what was this evil?
example I set to others, and who were these others? The evil example charged is that I asserted the rights of my own country, and the others I appealed to aid my endeavor were my own countrymen. The example was given not to Englishmen, but to Irish men and Irish women. And the like case can never arise in England, but only in Ireland. To Englishmen, I set no evil example, for I made no appeal to them. I asked no Englishman to help me. I asked Irishmen and Irish women to fight for their rights. The evil example was only to other Irishmen who might come after me, and in like case seek to do as I did. I die for my country.